Two years ago, we bought this property for £116,000 and it generates over £28,000 per year in rent. In this video, we're gonna take a closer look at the numbers on this deal, how much this property cost us, how much it makes, and everything we did to get the property from looking like this to like this. So if you're new here, my name is Leah. And I'm AK. And this is our channel where we talk about property investing, business, and working together as a couple. Now, before we talk about how we found this deal, if you're interested in starting or elevating your property journey, then remember to click that subscribe button for more content just like this. Okay, so let's get into the video. Let's first talk about how we found this deal. Now this was an off market deal where we had direct contact with a retiring landlady who was selling another property in her portfolio. We built quite a good relationship with this uh, retiring landlady who we previously purchased another property from in the same area. When the property was about to become mm. vacant, I asked the mm. landlady if I could view mm. the property. So I rang my builder and asked him if he wanted to come around and have a look so that we could start to take a look at the costs for this particular project. And at the time, the property was renting for about £550 per month for the whole house. And as you can see in these videos, this was the state of the property uh, when we were buying it. As we mentioned before, we'd purchased another property on the same street just a year before. We kind of knew the numbers and what we would need to purchase it for in order to return what we wanted. And because we were repeating the same project, same layout, same floor plan, we, we knew the tenant type, we knew that the demand was high based on our other HMO properties nearby. Let's now talk about the asking price. So originally we agreed that if we purchased three properties off this particular landlady, instead of paying the asking price of £130,000 for each property, we would pay £116,000 for each. And so the vendor and I agreed a sale of £116,667. So yeah. if you add all of those together, you get £350,000. So she knew she was selling three for three hundred and fifty, dollars And there were no more further negotiations on that price. With the one caveat that we wouldn't be buying them all in one go, we needed to space out the projects to allow us to buy, renovate, refinance and purchase again. Now this property was pretty grimy to be honest with you. I actually went into the property before it was stripped out. Just to have a look with my builder again and uh, unfortunately I got eaten alive, bitten alive by fleas that were in the property, or I think were in the property because my legs were just covered in... Bites. In, yeah, red bite marks and so were your dad's. And we got home and we were like, we kept on itching off our legs like this and uh, we, we looked down and they were just covered. So so yeah. one of the learnings from that was always wear jogging bottoms and don't wear shorts to property viewings. Good learning that. So as we mentioned before, we knew from our previous projects that we'd completed in that area and one of them on the same street, that the numbers worked at 116K purchase. So what do we mean by that? Do you want to explain what we mean by we knew the numbers would work? Yeah, so we knew that if we were able to purchase the property at 116,000 and refurbish the property at say 60,000 pounds and we were able to then refinance it with a new mortgage with a predicted valuation of say 170,000 pounds, then we knew with those numbers that the deal would positively cash flow but we're going to cover the exact numbers on this deal just a little bit later on so let's talk about the plan of action for this property earlier i said that we'd be repeating the same project before however this one was a little bit different that's right and the main difference with this project was that we were going to try increasing the size of the bedrooms by sacrificing a living room area sacrificing <laughs> sacrificing, sacrificing a, a living room area and when you think about these types of properties most of the time tenants don't know each other yeah and often they don't really socialize that much in the living room they just want to hang out in their own room so by sacrificing the living room we could actually give them bigger space in their own bedrooms if you're a regular here you'll know that we've got a lot of shift workers that live in our hmos and their room becomes their home so we work with our builder to plan out a new layout which would accommodate towards bigger rooms with no living room. So here's what we did to it. As you enter the property, we turned the first reception room into a bedroom with an ensuite. The second reception room then became the second bedroom instead of the shared communal space for the house. The kitchen stayed in the same location and the main entrance to the property was moved to the side of the house through a gate down a shared alleyway. 
And then upstairs, we reconfigured the layout to create two double bedrooms, all with en suites and a really nice size off suite for bedroom two. So if you're wondering what an off suite is, it's an en suite that's dedicated to a room, but it's not attached to it. So everybody would have their own generous space, own bathroom and access to the shared kitchen area. So how much did this HMO reconfiguration all cost? So let's, let's take, take a look, look at, at the those numbers. numbers. <laughs> Let's take a look at the numbers. So the purchase price, as you know, was £116,000, of which £82,500 was a bridge. And now it's important to remember that only £74,000 landed in our accounts as they took 12 months of interest upfront. And if you aren't familiar with bridging loans, then check out our other video on how to use bridging finance to buy an investment property. We also raised some money from hands-off investors to do the refurbishments on this project. So if you're interested in becoming an investor, please visit our website propertycouple.co.uk link in description where you can find out more now the refurbishment for this property was probably the most expensive refurbishment that we'd done to date coming in at sixty thousand pounds and this was to take the property back to brick from a three bed house to a four bed four bath house of multiple occupancy and it's also worth bearing in mind that it cost us another ten thousand pounds to fully furnish the house and have professional photography taken so the furniture included beds wardrobes bedside tables desks chairs and all the white goods for the kitchen as well as every utensil you could probably need in a kitchen everything was fully kitted out you can see a list of the items that you would need to consider when doing an hmo refurb on screen now we will actually be sharing documents like this in the future in our newsletter. So if you haven't already, please make sure you do sign up. But the thing that makes this deal super interesting is that we had a four bed HMO valued on the same street at £140,000 less than a year before. And once we had this project valued for the refinance, the value of this new property that we'd done came in at £200,000. So that is £60,000 more. And when talking to the valuer, he said that this project was hotel-like. He, he said it was beautifully done. Um, those were his words. And he thought that the finish and the layout was great and much, much better than other HMOs he'd seen in the area. So our new layout and tweaks and finish clearly worked and helped us get a fantastic revaluation. Now we pulled 75% of the equity out of this property, less some fees, which meant that we had a new mortgage of £148,000 and used some of the funds to pay off the bridging loan. So we paid off the £85,000 bridge and that left us with around £63,000 to either invest into our next deal or pay back some of our investors. As you can see here, this is the completion statement for when we got the refinance and the new value to get onto our buy to let mortgage. So let's have a look at some of the rental figures. Now these rents, just for your information, have only increased about 2% in the last two years, but here they are. So room one is coming in at 590. Room two, 575. Room three is also 590. And room four, also 590. So the total rent for the property is 2,345 pounds per month and that is £28,140 per year. So I'm now going to share my cash flow calculator on screen to briefly show you what the return on investment looks like using a BRRR method. And for those of you who don't know what a BRRR method is, that is buy, renovate, refinance and rent. So as always with HMO properties, bear in mind that this is an all bills included property. So we pay council tax, we pay utilities and internet. And when I say utilities, I mean gas and electric. So you'll notice here on the cash flow calculator that I've allocated 30% of the rent to these costs. Now, something else to mention is that in the winter, the bills definitely go up and in the summer, they come down. So this is just an average to give you guys a bit of an idea. So if you found this video useful, then please do head over to our website and sign up for our newsletter for more advice and tips on property investing. Please do also subscribe because we post videos like this every single week. If you're new around here, we would love to have you as part of the fam. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. See you guys. Bye. Bye.